Hey guys, my name is Tim. I'm the master mechanic at Zeiten BMW Mobile Services. And today we have 2003 BMW X5 E53 with the M54 engine. It's a 3.0. And what we're going to do is replace the crankcase ventilation valve kit. So it's the valve, all four hoses, intake manifold gasket, cleaning the throttle body, the idle control valve, all of those. And the difference is like on the E46 and the E53, it's a tiny small detail that separates those two cars uh, parts wise. So we'll get into it while we get into the replacement itself. So without further ado, let's get to it. First thing we're gonna do is remove the plastic, all the necessary plastic that we need to remove. And we'll start this with this uh, weather strip. Let's take it out of the way. And uh, then we go for those clips right here. Most of them are probably not working on your X5, on this one. They just don't. This one, push and turn. And everywhere. So, and then you just lift it up out of the way. Then right here, we have this little tab so you just uh it's right there just push it and lift this whole thing straight up just like that put it aside we have exactly the same one on the other side right here so i'll just push it and lift it and after that, there is a 13 millimeter right here. This is out and we have exactly the same one on the other side. Right here. They're usually not tight at all. And this one, you can remove uh, the washer fluid reservoir, but it's not absolutely necessary. There you go. This is how it's done. And after you remove those, there is uh, one simple move. And we take it all out. Clears a lot of room. Uh, then we'll continue with those covers. We have two 10 millimeter bolts right here to remove this whole thing, as well as the on, G on the uh, engine cover right here, two 10 millimeter nuts. Here are bolts, here are nuts. Uh, also, we have two 10 millimeters right here holding the air filter box in place. Uh, you can disconnect right away the mass airflow sensor. Take it off the wiring. Um, and then I'm gonna disconnect the right here. Come over here. This clamp right here. Uh, we'll just gonna unscrew this and remove this whole thing in one piece. Don't lose your clamps. Now we're gonna remove the diesel valve. It's a regular push and pull connector right here. There you go, you just push and release. And we have one bolt, it's Torx 40 right here. The other one is in the gap right here. You can't see it, I can't see it either, but you can definitely feel it. There it is.
And now we can simply move the DISA out. Still works. Uh, now we gained access to the lower intake boot, this piece right here. So we have one clamp in here for the idle control valve. Uh, we're gonna loosen this. We also gonna lose this clamp for the brake booster valve hose. Uh, we're gonna be separating it from the valve, from the brake booster itself. And when we move this out of the way, it will expose us the, well, actually it can be seen from the top as well, the uh, lower clamp for the uh, lower intake boot. It's a little bigger, so let's just start with those. That one is for the future. Just uh, make sure it's free and be very careful with it. It's really easy to break. So just uh, move it out of the way, all the way up. That's good enough. Then we take this out. You can also use a six millimeter socket for those clamps. I just like my screwdrivers. There you go. It's really hard to show, but I'll move this out of the way. Uh, and the next one, the just follow the screwdriver. It's right down there. If you're lucky, actually, because I worked on this car before. I set it up the way it's comfortable, but mostly those clamps are facing this way. You can encounter it's facing the other way sometimes, but and it's not the case today. So we have those uh, vacuum lines going right here into the intake boot. So remove those. It's two of them. I removed the whole intake boot trying to remove those lines. The second one right here. So the intake boot, there it is. Inspect those uh, places right here for cracks. It seems all good. That's nice. And now we are able to move this hose out of the way. The way you do it is just uh, basically it's really All you gotta do is lift it straight up, no angles, because it's uh, really easy to break this valve. There you go. All right. Now we move to removing the throttle body and this electrical hub. Uh, it's held by 10 millimeter bolt and two 10 millimeter nuts, one right here and one is right down there. First of all, I'm gonna disconnect the connector from the throttle body, so it's just push and pull the wire. There you go, because it's blocking one of the nuts. Then we have this uh, extension with the 10 millimeter socket on top. Feel the nut first, it's right there because I can't see it either. You won't see it, I won't see it. This is where it is. And just loosen it, it's not very tight. And let's get it out.
So that's the first one. Then the second one is right here, right on top. Okay. And the third one is the bolt. It's right here. This is it. So this electrical hub is free to go. The only thing left is uh, this connector right here for the idle control valve. So it's the same one push and release and I know they usually get stuck so I'll just put my screwdriver right here push and release this is how it's done so now we can move this freely as you can see and from there now we are able to remove the throttle body throttle body is held by four 10 millimeter bolts so this is the top I don't see any of them just know where they are you will feel them there's nothing else in there then one right under it right here I would suggest you remove the bottom ones entirely since you're losing them you don't have to catch them again those are long bolts for the throttle body and then right across from this bottom one there is another bottom bolt there you go caught it in one sitting Remove it. And the top one is right on top. It's a square setup, so they all one after another. And the last bolt for the throttle body is coming out. And the throttle body is out. Looks pretty clean actually for the mileage. What it does, removal of the throttle body allows us to gain access to the 16, mm, 16 millimeter nut right under intake manifold that I will show you where it is. That's the only thing that's holding it from the bottom. Uh, everything else is on top. And after that, we just uh, basically easily remove the intake manifold. I'm just gonna be using the long extension and 16 millimeter. So the nut is right there deep inside I don't know if you can see it but if you follow the extension it's right down there once you loosen it you can reach your hand in there and just uh, take it off if you lost it in the process don't worry about it you remove the intake manifold you'll find it which we will do but there it is and the final step um, well mostly at the bottom is we got to replace uh, remove one of the crankcase ventilation valve hoses it's a valve to the oil pan from the oil dipstick it's uh, right there if you go around over here so this is the hose it's right here 
basically you have to pull really hard on it and you can see it's all oily so it's not that easy uh, you might gonna need to use the little pick tool so I'm going deep inside there where the hose basically starts and I'm just gonna push from there there you go so this is where it goes right here this is where it goes this is the hose it's the only one in there now we're ready to move to the top on top right here we have oxygen sensor connectors so just push them out of the way out here then remove those pins just push them and here's the push and release connector there you go uh, remove this hose of course from the valve cover to the valve uh, push from both sides you can do that and remove it or you can do it like that like this is one side and this is the other this is free and now there is a connector to the venous solenoid for the intake it's right here push there you go so now we're gonna remove the fuel injector electrical connect connectors uh, there are two ways of doing it one you can uh, is risky you can break something it's basically you pushing on this thing right here and popping him off or we'll just go the safer route pushing it one by one now we're gonna remove those uh, little brackets so the way you do it take them out and the other side the other you can just uh, push the other side and basically it's free so now we can uh, remove it so we continue doing the same thing with all of them all six of them uh, but this is how you do it so they just gonna be hanging on the injector and you can remove this electrical hub easily there we go so uh, now just uh, push the brackets back in place don't forget to pick those that you removed on injectors right here and the way you do it basically squeeze it together and now close up so squeeze the bracket together to retain basically it's back in shape and now we just uh, put it one side right here all around and this is it put them all back now we're gonna remove the whole fuel rail it's held by four 10 millimeter bolts two here in the front and two in the back Now to remove this uh, fuel injector rail, basically you can try lifting it, which works. If not, uh, you can put basically a breaker bar like this. This is uh, actually a tire remover bar. 
So you can put it on one of the nuts of the valve cover and gently pry it out, just like that. It will work like a charm, you won't break anything, and you can do the same in the back right here, just like that. So this frees up the fuel rail and opens up the access to nine 11 millimeter nuts of the intake manifold there, right there. We'll show them a bit later. So those are uh, nine 11 millimeter nuts. Um, on the X5, they're real easy to access. They all around there, so you won't lose them. All bolts are out, nine uh, 11 millimeter nuts on top of the intake manifold and 16 millimeter nut at the bottom. So nothing holding the intake manifold anymore. Uh, now we're gonna disconnect this uh, connector from the purge valve or tank ventilation valve and also remove it from the holder. And there is a a line connected to the bottom of it so it's a squeeze and release um, that's what we're gonna do don't break it be careful it might get really tight there you go and now we're gonna put it back in place so we don't really need it hanging uh, we just need it disconnected. The other thing that are connected to the intake manifold, it's uh, right at the bottom uh, in the end of the intake manifold. Like you can have this fuel line might be in the bracket. Uh, we also have some vacuum lines going in there. I disconnected one of them already from the secondary air injection valve. And also there is a must be electrical connector for the secondary air injection switch basically so if you reach in there you will definitely feel it it's impossible to see but it's there this is the area where it's at there you go i just disconnected it and it's right here if you can see it also might be in the bracket it's a regular push and release, just like that. So now is everything is disconnected. Basically, we're ready to move the intake manifold out of the way. And now let's remove the intake manifold. So push it up, push it forward. Nice and easy, slowly. Don't break anything, check for uh, any brackets that can hold anything. But basically, there you go. So here's the back of the intake manifold and this is the switch that I was talking about. And this is one of the vacuum line that connects to the uh, secondary, secondary air injection valve. Uh, then as you can see, those holding up pretty good because I replaced those approximately 100,000 miles ago. Uh, this is the bracket for the um, fuel rail, fuel line, basically it locks in place and right here we have we actually can increase the vacuum pressure of the crankcase vent valve 
if we connect the vacuum line from here this port because you can remove it i'll show you later to the crankcase ventilation port right here that is possible but now um, we'll focus on you can as you can see it's been approximately a hundred thousand since replacement of these components and they are easily separated and all oily all around this hose especially it's uh it feels really funny so i'll just remove it and replace all of it to remove the crankcase vent valve uh, it's held by two torx 25 bolts this is it but before we do that um, i'm gonna disconnect this bottom hose of course just to keep it out of the way and i need to disconnect this one don't it's real easy to break it it's easier to break it than actually remove this you can see how brittle it all is it's, uh, it's been a while i didn't although i didn't have any issues with the regarding to the valve but it's time to replace so we better do it and let's just get those out of the way and now the valve still gonna disconnect this hose there we go the valve is removed on top we still have those connection for the hoses and you can see the oil is dripping right away because the valve is not basically most likely working to the hundred percent uh, disconnect that this is out and this hose on top as well this is it So the whole crankcase vent valve system is uh, removed and there is a regarding parts hmm? um, x5 only has this hose which is from the crankcase ventilation valve to the oil pan is much longer than on the e46 let's say or x3 or z4 or any of those cars so the x5 is the only one that has a much longer it's like approximately this much longer so basically if you're getting the kit and it's for 325 330 e46 bmw it will have the shorter hose you won't be able to fit it in into the x5 so just make sure the kit you're getting is for the x5 i'll try to put the links down below for the parts um, it's a it's gonna be a custom kit like this one most likely uh, we have the genuine the valve crankcase ventilation valve with uh, two hoses that will fit any m54 engine so it's absolutely genuine it's for also for cold climate that's the only one we got uh, we can remove this cold climate stuff from the hoses and from the valve itself it's not necessary here in california at all so there it is looks exactly the same if we peel off those things we don't need it not a bit there you go we got the valve so this is genuine BMW has the BMW stamp on it right here. Uh, surprisingly, it's not much different from Phoebe Bilstein. So this is what we get. And regarding the hoses, 
it's gonna be rain this is for this uh, longer hose crankcase vent valve to the oil pan this is it that's how long it is um, and this is for the top so it's rain as well that's what we're going to use for the intake manifold gasket we're going to use the uh, l-ring as my way to go uh, in order to install the valve it comes like this from the kit so we separate this hose first and then take this one out as well as carefully as possible so just uh, this pin it's really tight So what we're gonna do is uh, remove this one, hold it in place. There you go. Now oh, that's a really tight hose. Need another screwdriver here. There you go. It's a really tight hole, so having two screwdrivers or pick tools is a good idea. And I'm going to remove this piece right here because we're gonna install the the hose in there to increase the crankcase pressure and now we install those two Torx 20 bolts I mean Torx 25 there goes the one not all the way in There you go. Now uh, the next step would be installing this hose and the way to go is we start from the top. We go all around here just like that. We turn around here and guide it to the valve. is how it goes you can see it clearly around this area right here the hose is on the valve push it till it clicks try to pull it out if it stays uh, stays good you're good to go then continuing with this hose it's uh, not yet we push this into this uh, connector so next we're going to be installing this breather hose. We install it first right here. Then to the other side of the intake manifold. Push till it clicks. There you go. And only after that we can finally connect this hose right here till it clicks so the top portion is done now I'm gonna be removing 
this piece right here this port and connecting this port to the crankcase ventilation valve via uh, vacuum line and as I can see those vacuum lines are still fine all good all set that is cool uh, yeah we have a pretty lengthy vacuum line right here now let's just make it this way so what are we gonna do is I'm gonna push this vacuum line connect it to this port right here this is a brand new vacuum line in case you don't know and go through the intake manifold and what we got to do is connect it to the crankcase vent valve but uh, we need to make it in a way that it's not on the way of the throttle body so I'll just uh, push it through right well actually we can go around this hose just barely enough nope that's not gonna do it bending too much let's try it from here yeah from here works Yep, there you go. This is the way to go. And we connect it to the hose and push it back so it's not on the way of anything. When we install back the throttle body, it's not going to be on the way. And it's not on the way of anything. Uh, now, basically, to well, of course, we're going to replace the intake manifold gasket the best way to go just don't lose those pieces expect them to jump out Now I just want to uh, remove the idle control valve to clean it a little bit and to check. Now I'm going to remove the idle control valve. It's uh, two Torx 40 bolts. And just simply get it out. So the easy test of how to test your idle control valve is uh, you do this. You hear the noise it's good uh, even though it was uh, in the beginning it was a little bit sluggish I have the intake valve cleaner right here so uh, we'll just spray it a little bit whatever fluid you have to clean it can be carb cleaner brake cleaner whatever it will all be doing the same job it's just gonna be cleaning the everything let it all get through if you're cleaning your idle control valve with the carb cleaner or any type of cleaner and your uh, intake valves 
which we will be doing. Just expect when you start the car, it's gonna be idling rough or misfiring a little bit. That's just because of the fluid is in there. It's not proper mixture. This is normal. Second startup, you'll be just fine. You'll see, most likely. Just uh, clean it up a little bit. Nice and clean, and let's just put it back. All the way. And now we are almost ready to install the crankcase, I mean the intake manifold back in place. But the first thing we're gonna do, install this hose till it clicks, pointing this way. And install this hose, 90 degree angle going on top. So right here, pointing this way. If you replacing those vacuum lines, uh, just make sure that the one that goes this way, it's pointing up. Don't let it go this way because the line is connected right here. It's gonna be easier for you if it's pointing up. First of all, it's easier to find because it's gonna be sticking up. And the second of all, it's easier to connect. So just a little life hack, basically. Let's install the intake manifold back in place. To install the intake manifold back in place, um, just uh, pay attention to this hose. So what are we gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna route this hose under this coolant transfer pipe. This is how it goes. You can leave it out there. There you go. Then, Just make sure it doesn't get stuck anywhere. There we go. Uh, the next point would be to route this hose around the oil filter cap. So we just, uh, before we're putting it down, I'm just putting it this way so it doesn't get stuck in here because it's not gonna reach and it's impossible to put it back in place if you lower the manifold. And then we simply put it just like that. There you go. Just make sure that this electrical hub is out of the way. The bottom piece is through so yeah this is it now the only thing left to do is basically to put all the knots in place and then the final one is 16 millimeter and the intake manifold is back in place just before you bolt it all on 
uh, make sure the intake manifold is flush, uh, but you probably will feel it if it's not. Uh, the easy way to spot it is basically um, check the distance between the bolts, basically the rear one and the front one. If it's approximately the same, um, the left amount where the nut goes, like there you go, it's uh, and the middle one, all of them line up pretty properly. The intake manifold sits well, but you'll feel it if it's not. Uh, it would be moving from side to side if it's not flush, if something on the way, like the this cable can be easily. Um, but other than that, let's just put the bolts on. After all the bolts are on, which we just did, um, it's a... Uh, it's a good place. I mean, it's a good time to connect this hose to the valve cover. And the other thing is connect this bottom hose to the oil pan basically, or to the oil dipstick. There you go, it's all in. And now we can proceed with uh, installing the throttle body which we will clean first. Let's proceed with installing the throttle body. So this is the way it goes. Just uh, move this electrical hub out of the way. There you go. Uh, as you remember, it's uh, four 10 millimeter long bolts, just like those. The only one you see is top left corner. So you start with that. Put it on. So the throttle body is in place and not falling down. Then we go to the opposite side. Just feel the hole in the, the throttle body and basically you just gotta feel it. You just gotta feel where the bolts go. Once you install two of them, this is it, basically the throttle body is in place and the bottom two are simpler to match. Let's go with, the, with this one. But not tighten any of them before you got all of them in places. All four bolts should be in place first and then you can proceed with tightening them. And the last one. There you go. All right. Okay, the throttle body is installed. Now we can put uh, back in place this electrical hub. So we'll start with the connector for the idle control valve. And then put this one in place. And the other one will follow. I'll just uh, 
sorry, put the nut on top right here, not tightening it, just to keep it in place. And the bolt right here as well. And then we're gonna put the, that's the way to go. Yep, knot is in place. The third one. It is on. There you go. And now don't forget to plug in the throttle body. That's the time to do it. There it is. And basically tighten everything else. Now, while we are in this area, don't forget to uh, plug in the hose for the tank ventilation valve right here at the bottom. It's a tight hose, remember? So it's a tight fit. make sure it's all the way in and don't forget to connect it now we're ready to install the lower intake boot and as you can see this is pointing out this is where it goes so you can feel it on side of the throttle body there's two lines in there so this is where this piece goes right in between them make sure uh, everything lines up properly just like that there you go so we'll start tightening the clamps from the bottom one and uh, I'm going to be using the long screwdriver it's uh, right down there and then the top one the little trick is you can hold the clamp right here with the finger so when you push it down it doesn't move that will keep it in one spot once again you it's not necessary to use the screwdriver you can use the six millimeter socket makes it easier for some people and then we do the same with the top idle control valve boot basically okay and when we're done right there just finish up with this part is connect this hose don't forget about this it's a brake booster valve uh, hose just push it straight down no angles don't break it it's really easy to break especially if you angle it a little bit so put it on make it tight
And once we've done that, don't forget those two lines connecting to the lower intake boot, vacuum lines. There you go. Now we are done in this area. Basically, it's just diesel valve and uh, basically upper intake boot. Now we are going to this area. And first thing I want you to remember is that we removed the connector from the uh, secondary air injection switch. Don't forget about that. But before that, we're gonna, I'm just gonna install the, and now put back the electrical connector for the fuel injectors. We'll start with the Vanna solenoid. There you go. Then this one. And make sure everything lines up. Uh, pull this hose out of the way and just push till it clicks everywhere. Now we basically all done here. So the only last part is to connect the vacuum line, this one from the switch to the secondary air injection. There we go and the electrical connector for the switch. You can see here, you won't be able to, so just feel it. There we go. Okay, everything is intact. Now, those brackets. And the wiring. Okay. Now we install back the air intake box with the basically upper uh, intake boot. It might be a little tight in there, connection wise. There we go, all good. Uh, put the Ten millimeters right here. Don't forget the mass airflow and tightening the clamps. The final part, diesel valve.
this valve installed and don't forget to plug it in. Before we put anything else, uh, I just want to do a quick startup to check if everything's okay. And, uh, everything else is basically the plastic, so just the way you removed it, install it back, but uh, let's do the startup. Uh, just before you start the car, it might be a good idea if you have a scanner, uh, just uh, plug it in and check for codes, because if you forgot to plug something in, it will tell you right away. But uh, let's see how it goes after cleaning and everything. It's pretty smooth. Good. Although I didn't have any problems with the car, I didn't have air leaks, it didn't run lean and everything was fine. It's just uh, it's a good idea to let it run after any repair to see how it uh, performs. So yeah, it's uh, doing pretty good, pretty nice. No issues. Let it run for a little bit. This is it guys. Uh, install all the plastic back in reverse order because it's not uh, crucial. Everything works fine. Everything's great. And thank you guys for watching. Don't break your cars. And see you in the next one. Thank you.